Hope hello, I'm here to talk to you today about the good side of social media because I'm kind of sick of hearing the general complaints from both left and right and also the older generation that social media is bad. The left tend to see social media as like this terrifying wild west that needs regulated straight away because the the far right are getting away with spreading their vile ideas and so on and so forth. These people are conspiratorial. Look at the alternative influence, uh, influence the alternative influence on network. Total, un, un, unspecified, unjustified conspiracy theory. In what way is millennial was? connected to Professor Jordan B. Peterson. Insane. Nuts, basically. Conspiracy theory. And from from the older generation, they see they but they seem to believe and this is understandable, this is juvenile it's called. This is a kind of paranoia about what the the, the kids are doing now, kids these days, all that type of stuff. And I understand them more because they don't really understand social media that well. They just, they, they're kind of frightened by it, the concept of it kind of seems to scare them and they view it as a place where your life can get ruined and you can get abducted, you can get extorted, all this, all this type of stuff, this dangerous place effectively, which, and both of these things are in fact true. However, the scale that these people, these groups of people believe it to be is vastly exaggerated. The far right do have a platform on social media, but how many people follow Millennial Woes? How many people subscribe to Richard Spencer? Etc, etc. Like how many, like they're a tiny movement, they're a fringe movement, so it's not as if they're spreading their vile ideas far and wide. People don't know about them because they're not relevant to any sort of political dialogue. They don't change anything, they don't have an effect, so why are you worried about them, radical left? And for the older generation, just calm down. Just relax. Your life's not going to get ruined. How many people, on average, do you think has their life have their lives ruined by social media per year? Depends on where you are, really. Because in Britain, as you'll see, as you saw in my previous video, The Totalitarian Creep Part 1, link in the description because it's an important video, but as you saw in that, at least 3,000 people in Britain in 2017 had that happen to them. So the state and the prevailing culture seems intent on making social media a place where your life can get ruined. So this is kind of worrying, but the good side of social media, it gives, I, like, I can talk to my family and friends, my loved ones, anywhere in the world, at any date or time, instantaneously, as long as I have an internet connection through social media, I can speak to Anybody, I have access to thousands, to billions of human beings and their experience and their mindset and their values and principles. I can learn from them if I don't know, if I if I don't understand something, I can learn from other people's experience. It gives a platform to all individuals. Everyone can voice their concerns. It's like the proportional, the, uh, the unbelievable extremity of proportional representation where literally every individual has a platform to air, to air his or her grievances. The plebs can speak up, much like I'm doing now, because back in the day, it was a much... This, it's like a more direct version of democracy rather than a representative democracy, because you have the representatives, but they can be held to account on social media by everybody in the constituency who has a direct line straight to them. They can... That you, you have access to a wide range of political opinions on social media. This is the new public square. This is where the dialogue happens now. This is where issues are hashed out. This is where all of this stuff happens now. It's great. It's amazing. It's such a... It's one of the best inventions that I've ever come across for in terms of 
learning and dialogue and social connection. However, this platform is being taken away from us by Silicon Valley and and the governments, quite frankly. Trump seems to be the only world leader who's speaking out about uh, about social media censorship of conservative voices, and they're now coming for the centrists. And eventually it will be the left as well. The left will eat their own. They just don't know it. But um, that's since this platform has been removed, everyone has a duty to speak up. Everyone has a duty to make their concerns known about this issue, because if not you, then who? If not now, then when? And why? What? Once you've created the argument to censor conservatives, why could you yourself not be censored? What argument would would anyone use in defence of you if the argument for censorship of conservatives was fine? What argument can they use in defence of you and your freedom of speech? Jack Dorsey went on Joe Rogan and said that Twitter is a human right and I think it's fair of me to assume that he means that the other social media platforms are also human rights. He's created something that is massive in its reach and it gives everyone a platform it gives it's like the most true expression of freedom of speech where everybody has a platform to air their grievances the most direct form of democracy where everyone can keep their politicians accountable not just at the ballot box but in real time but jack dorsey you violate your own principles by banning the lists and lists of people that I've given before. I'm not about to give it again. I've done videos on Silicon Valley censorship. Unless something new happens, I probably won't do one again. But this is very concerning. This is very, very concerning that this platform, this almost unregulated platform, is being taken away from people because the owners of the platform don't like their message. This is big enough to be, in and of itself, a monopoly. Once you have Facebook, what and billions of people are on Facebook, what's the need to go to a Facebook clone just because they support free speech? Twitter as well, YouTube as well, all these things, what is the need? So, I'm very concerned about this, but this has been the good side of social media. It gives you access to everybody, it gives everybody access to you, you can air your grievances, you can speak to anybody you like, you can keep in contact with your family and friends from thousands of miles away at any day or time. Thank you very much. If you like my videos, subscribe to me please, if you're new. Like my videos, share them, comment on them, If you, let me know what you think in the comments, especially if you disagree with me. Thank you very much everybody.